yeah, let's directly jump into it. So to create a new cost element hierarchy, we will simply use the transaction code KAH1. And here you can see on the landing area that we first need to give the new cost element group a name. So in this case, an ID, so to say. And we can also create a new cost element group from a reference of already existing cost element groups. In that case, I would here simply yeah, state the cost element group that is already existing in the system and the respective chart of accounts. And then I cre can create from reference, meaning that the new cost element group would inherit everything from the already existing cost element group, and then we can change the structure and hierarchy as we please. However, now we will create one from scratch. So you can see I've already inserted here an ID, and then I click on hierarchy or on enter on my keyboard. Yeah, and first of all, we need to give a name for this hierarchy. So I will just say cost element hierarchy uh, example, for instance, and then to create new groups, we would simply click on this ID over here and then say lower level, because we only have one, yeah, top node, so to say, and one to end sub nodes. And here I would say, let's say personal expenses, for instance, like that. And then we have another one on the same level, which would be service expenses, service expenses, maybe one more like material expenses for sure, material expenses. And then we have a fourth one, which would be the, let's say overall revenue like that. And this should be fine for now. Please be aware that this is only an example, so for sure your cost element groups could look totally different. For small and medium enterprises, it makes sense to utilize something called an operational accounting sheet, and from there we could derive those yeah, groups that you can see over here. Now what we need to do is, and for sure, just so that you know, we can also insert subgroups under these groups and so on. So this can become a really complex structure if we, if we want. For now, we will still say that this is already fine for us. So now we want to insert the actual cost elements. Therefore, I click on one of those uh, lines over here, so personal expenses, and then I click on cost element. And there you can see we can now insert our cost elements. We could insert them directly if we know the number, or we can also click on this little, yeah, downwards point, pointing arrow over here and then we can search for cost elements. We search for cost elements in the respective chart of accounts. So I will take the, my chart of accounts over here. And as I know them by heart, and you could also start to search, but I know them already. So I'll just insert here for the salary in this case. So let me start a search and we can see the cost element salary and I can input it over here and then press enter. And I will continue with the same for the other ones. So for the service, I have another one. And this time I will directly insert it over here, 616300. Um, this would be maintenance costs. And then we have the material expenses. There I will put in the cost element. Can al always use the search help. Um, let me say, this time I don't know it by heart. So let's say we are searching for something like raw materials, so input raw. Let's see, and there we can see there is a valid example, raw material consumption. And then for the revenue, um, let's also include here the cost element for our respective chart of accounts. And this time we will search for something like sales revenue, for instance. And we can see, okay, this time I have no valid. Let's see, sales maybe, yeah. And there we have one, so let's take this one over here. And that should be fine. And yeah, now we have a kind of little hierarchy already established in the system with node, as you can see, or one top node, as you can see over here. A couple of groups we created under this top node and then one to n cost elements. And then we can save this one. Let's now imagine that later on we found out that we want to add some more cost elements to our already existing hierarchy. I would jump into the change mode. This would be KAH2. For my already created cost element group, I hit enter. And now I could here, if I want, 
insert via cost element more cost elements. Let's say we want to change a cost element, so we want to actually reflect it in another group. So let's imagine <laughs> we take the material expenses, even though that this example may not make that much sense, but it's just about that you learn how to actually change the group for a cost element. Let's say we take the consumption raw material over here, and we want to insert it in the service expense category. So therefore I would mark this one and then over here you can see select, I would hit this one and then afterwards I would also click on the service experts because there I actually want it to be inserted. So I want it to be changed from the material expense to the service expense and then afterwards I will click on insert at lower level. And now if we look at this again we can see that the cost element is now inside the service expense group and not in the material expense group anymore. Last but not least, let's imagine we want to delete the cost element. Therefore, I would simply need to click on the cost element itself. Then I would select it like that. And then over here, you can click on remove and then save. Yeah, and maybe one more important thing to mention over here is that we can't just name the group as we please. There are some restrictions. And let me show this and then we are finished. So basically, if I say same level, let me just say now uh, other expenses, something like that. You can see name other expenses is invalid. And let's view the details actually. Here we can see what is actually a lot and what is, what is not. So basically, you can see here that group names may contain a maximum of 10 characters plus a suffix of a maximum of four characters. And those 10 characters and then the suffix, they must be connected or separated by a dot, so to say. And then, furthermore, for the group names, we have letters, numbers, underscores and hyphens as valid examples. However, we cannot use empty spaces as you've seen in my example and we can't use such operators as not and and so on.